Hello. Hopefully I can see you guys chat this time. I'm going to type in the chat box. Hi. Anybody see me type in that? Or no. Hey, now I can see people. All right. <clears throat> I don't know what was going on before. How you doing, Jolanda? Hey, there's my wife. All right, we're working this time. Sorry about that, everybody. So, um, I don't really have a plan for today. I'll just start off a little bit of plan until some people come. Gremlins in the machine. because I was busy with the hand pan master class and uh, so I took a little break very inspiring if anybody uh, was in it with me I'm I'm super inspired from it and I've just been working on all different kinds of, of new things that I've never really uh, explored too much before and it's been really fun I'm gonna talk about some of them today if any of you were in the master class you know that there was a lot of different uh, approaches and techniques and it was really it was really great resource personally I, I think I learned a lot hey Ejin. yep some redangum. Well, I don't really play that instrument, but um, I play tabla and udu, and that's kind of what, when I, when I play these handpans vertical, that's kind of what it reminds me of is a redangum. But one side is udu and the one side is tabla, so then you get like the... I never tried to do it on this halo. <laughs> Pretty big. Try it on a, on a smaller, less heavy instrument. Um, yeah, the Murdungam stuff is definitely more of a vertical approach to the pan. So if you hit the udu sound with the goo, like a flat straight, and hit the ding with your thumb at the same time. Kind of counteract the the force of it. You get a nice kind of doom sound. Oops! And then you can do a snare, but don't hit the rim like that. I mean, don't hit the note that hard. There. See where I'm hitting it? That first time I hit it more on the note. That's why it sounded like that. And I usually don't hit it that hard there. So I'm hitting it like a rim shot almost on the outside. Um, but 
that's kind of a cool way, I think, to approach it. And I hope one day to see a real Indian master, Merdunga player, pick up a hand pan like that. <laughs> how's, how's everybody doing? It's been a while since I've been live here. Hey, Char. Hey, Jason. Nice approach. Thanks, Victor. So, um, yeah, this is a Ayasa Longloy. This is a nice scale. So let's talk about maybe some some uh, unless you know type if you guys want to talk about something. <laughs> cat drummer. It, it, if you want to talk about something specific, but here's something I was doing the other day with one of my students, um, kind of like in a songwriting exercise. You know, whatever scale you have. So this is in three four a chord on notes one three five, right? And another chord is no is on the other side, right? Notes two, uh, one, two, three, two, four, and six, right? Okay, so usually on most scales that'll sound nice like that. Um, so you go chord. still in three. Now there's no rest, it goes right back to the beginning. One, two, three, one, two, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? So, and then you can start to do things like changing it, doing a chord with the melody. So I'll do a different note, watch. That's the fourth note. So you see what I'm doing there? So that fourth note, now I'm putting on the high note and then going down the scale to the next one. One, two, three, one and two and three and. Maybe that could give some of you some uh, interesting thing, uh, sounding things on your scale. How's everybody doing? Doing good, man. Got any tips for moving away from a handful of rhythm patterns that you find yourself getting stuck in? <laughs> Do you have any tips? No. Um, yeah, it's just it's you know I get stuck in 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 the in my own grooves all the time, you know. But um, it's hard. We all have our go-to rhythms. You know, like at any moment, I could just go. Because that's just ingrained in my muscle memory. But if I want to try and do something different, I'd probably maybe um, maybe take a break from the hand pan for a little bit, actually, and uh, try and play a different. A different instrument, or listen to some different styles of music, and then and then come back to to the hand pan with kind of a new, a new approach, or that that can help a lot. Um, let's see, uh, like um, you know, any kind of music style, really. Like this pan, and different scales are gonna are gonna work with different types of music. I mean, for the most part, like I know this scale, this E long way, I can do kind of like a bossa nova feel if I'm going like this. That's not gonna sound as bassa y on every scale, right? To me, it sounds like the chords to a song to my father, a blue bassa, you know, one of those jazz standard bassas. But uh, th then on this scale, I can do like a break beat when I'm, when I'm doing this chord. 
this chord. to different styles get used to how they would how they would work uh, on different scales and try them out you know I'll show you another uh, example um. I've been recently exploring this um, new Asa Chan Isha Savita. I had an old one and I, I sold it for this new one because this one has uh, more notes on it so now I have more possibilities. Um, and you know for a while I was, I was kind of like I felt I was stuck you know just like you're saying like I, I was stuck just doing my old Isha Savita grooves you know that I used to do but then when, when I started exploring the extra notes more started to figure out some interesting things and if you have other pans and scales this is something you can do and, and explore um, what does this sound like with this pan with all these notes what does this ding sound like with every note on this pan what does this ding sound you know and, and just start to figure out different chords and stuff I was exploring three this one the halo and the and this um, maybe I can set it up on the stands at the end of the lesson and show you the crazy chords I was coming up with. I haven't really written much with it, but it was pretty wild. So um, here's like an example of like a reggae, right? familiar with the um, with the grooves on uh, before the hand pan right you have to kind of know how to do that say on this little doom back here right so once you get familiar with the feels then you can apply those different feels um, and like I said, not every feel is going to work with every pan, so reggae might sound weird on your scale, but uh, for this one I, I figured out that's kind of cool. Mm, two, three, four, you know? Doing, um, exploring kind of like Afrobeat, which is one of my favorite types of, of music. If you guys aren't familiar with Afrobeat music, like uh, Fela Kuti and Femi, um, and, and lots of others, but but those are like the you know that's his son, and I saw Femi play in Boston, and it was amazing. Um, it's uh, you know it's it's really up tempo African uh, dance music. And it's usually in kind of uh, feel like uh, here's like an example. I was trying to come up with something on here that was works. Let's see. You know, and that would just be like the baseline. <laughs> 
and then and then you got and then you got you know the whole rhythm orchestra behind it you know Afrobeat's really cool. Let's see uh, what people are saying here. Um, learn them all starting with the left hand. That's always important and something I am guilty of not being able to do on a lot of a lot of stuff just because you know, I, the, the muscle memory is so hard to break. Jacob, do you think listening to some regional or foreign music would help with this? Yeah, and I think I just answered that. Um, definitely. Listen to some world music, get some inspiration, some world grooves. Um, there's a lot of amazing rhythms to uh, learn. So let's see. This pan is a uh, Echo Sound Sculpture Asachan Yisha Savita. It's um Yeah. C sharp F F sharp G sharp B C, because this is my version of it, right? I added these these notes, so you got a chromatic thing going, <laughs> which I usually don't do, but you can if you want to get real crazy. Um, yeah, C sharp, F, F sharp, G sharp, B, C, C sharp, E flat, F, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, E flat. So you can do some. I'm starting. I'm starting to figure out with this B that you can do really interesting things if you don't touch the C, right? That's where this Afro beat kind of came from. I'm skipping. I'm jumping over the C, right? I should just put a magnet here or something so I don't touch it. But. And that rhythm. If you guys are curious of what I'm doing, it's just like a. So you see that left comes in right before one as an as an anticipation. One, a oh, one. Right, left, right, right, left, left, right. 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 And then I'm splitting it apart though. What I do, I take these drum rudiments, because I'm a drummer, I take these rudiments, I don't know that many of them, single doubles, hair diddles, some variations of them, um, flams, you know, stuff like that, and you can split it between just going like this, and between your, at least your first four fingers, I, I do my, my pointers and my middles to do all the different combinations of the stuff. So that's what I'm doing here. This becomes, right, right, left, right, right, left, left, right. Left, right, right, left, left, right. The split between your fingers. Uh.
cool little Afrobeat kind of thing. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. You guys are welcome. I'm happy that you're here. 19 people, man. Whew. We got a thousand people in here now. Yeah. Thousand members, over a thousand. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, would you uh, would you recommend Darbuka for a beginner on the handpan, so I could learn finger independence? Definitely. Um, any any hand drum is gonna help, you know. You can even just play it like this, like a like a djembe, you know. But you use your thumbs, right? Because you're not gonna when you're playing a djembe, you'd usually use your whole hand. But with the the dumbek and the darbuka, you can get a nice tone with your thumb like that. You know, I kind of play things in my own way, you know, that's kind of a hybrid of tabla technique and stuff going on. But you can play it traditionally more, you know, like this. a lot, but it's, it's the truth. You know, it all starts in here, and here, and here. You know, we are the instrument. This stuff is just our tool to express ourselves. Afrobeat is amazing. I'm going to give that a love. You are correct. Definitely one of my favorite. I want to start an Afrobeat band, actually. If anybody wants to start an Afrobeat band, I need a bassist. I need a bunch of percussionists. I need a horn section. It's okay if you don't have a percussion a percussion background, um, you know. I think um, any different. I love all different the styles and approaches. This is just all I know, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, look behind me. I just all I my whole life I've been a drummer. I started playing drum set at age seven years old. Uh, I started taking lessons when I was eleven. And um, I uh, started playing percussion in high school and then in college is when I seriously got into world percussion with Jamie Haddad who plays percussion with Paul Simon and that was, he opened my eyes to world music and frame drum and kinjira and udu and uh, then I studied tabla with Zakir Hussain, not at Berkeley but uh, at Omega Holistic Resort that my mom signed me up and um, that really jump started as well, learning some tabla from him, really. And I'm just a beginner, I, I barely know anything in the tabla, but it was enough to influence my playing, you know? Sorry, I'm just trying to mute some some people here so people aren't chiming in and binging. All right, so what, what else is going on, everybody? David Kukerman does a lot of dark buku beats too. I'm taking congos, but with would be checking out Afrobeats. Yeah, David Kukerman is amazing. He was just one of our teachers for the handpan master class, and uh, it was awesome. His his class was, was very professional. He did a very great job, and um, we're, we were honored to have him as a teacher. Yeah, conga. I like doing a lot of conga stuff, um, like on the on the handpan too. You could do kind of Afrobeat stuff like that, really. Obviously, it's not it's not straight up conga stuff, you know. I mean, Miguel uh, Santa Maria was one of our teachers, and he'll show you some some real you know conga conga stuff that you can do. But you know, I kind of take things and hy hybridize them. So um, you know, there's a conga kind of motion. But it's still split up with like a split, kind of like split hand mixed with conga, right? Right, 
So I think it's important to learn these grooves, and I'll teach you this right now, everybody, but we're gonna do it in sections, because I think that's the easier way to do it, right? So you got... I'm doing like middle pointer to start it on the ding, and then, then that mute. muted snare rim because you leave your hand on it. Right? And then yeah. So then you're muting these up top. Lots of mutes happening. Except for the first two open bases. Those are all muted after that. Okay, let's see what happens next. Then you have two open, and that would be like on the conga, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that after. So then I'm lifting up my hand as I'm hitting middle pointer on the outer edge to get more of an open sound. So that's the first section, right? So, so um, does everybody have that? I'm a bassist for your Afrobeat band. Yeah, Victor, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so that's the first part. And then the second part is... Okay, so that's the whole thing. Let's see. Okay, so that's what we know so far. So then after that, you kind of have the heel toe of a conga, right? And you don't want to leave your hand too long on the ding because you'll notice it'll start to go a little out of tune. So, you know, when I'm doing that, um, kind of cupping it, right? I'm not like putting my whole palm on it, I'm trying to cup it so the less surface area. My hands are pretty warm right now. So I guess it matters your, your temperature too, because that's going to knock it out of tune temporarily if you leave it on there. What's the next two parts after that? Okay. And then... Okay. Yeah, and then right left at the end, because that helps you repeat it better. Kind of uh, my own my own version of everything. I guess I'm a I'm a real hand pan player because there's no rules for that, right? How's everybody doing? We've got 22 people in here. What else do we want to talk about? How am I doing so far? Anybody getting some? Anybody confused? Uh, let's see. Cajon Cajon is good good to to learn rhythms on definitely. Um, they're fun and it's a seat. You could, if you go camping, you could bring it with you as a seat and drum on it. Cajon is great for flamenco. Yeah. Rick. Yeah. Rick is something I don't play actually. Pandero, I don't play either. Those are two very difficult um, type of tambourine instruments. 
Okay, so what else we want to talk about? All right, so um, another thing I was working on from the master class, that's kind of something um, Nadashana inspired me to, to just do more of, which is you know, more of the split hand stuff, which I do a lot on uh, tabla and other instruments. Um, but, you know, I haven't, don't do it as much, perhaps. So I've been trying to work on it more on the hand pan. So I was sitting there the other day on my phone. And I was just going like this. pulling my hand back to get to the rim. One E and a two. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. And then I'm hitting two bases. Boom, boom. Snare, boom, boom. Snare, boom, boom. Try and do that same kind of thing on a note. That's kind of something I was inspired from the master class of Nadashana. Um, let's see. Hope you guys are doing good. When can we buy the master class if we missed it? Well, that's something that we were thinking about. We've had people ask, but right now, logistically, it would just be a little bit crazy, you know, trying to keep track of how much I owe every single teacher, you know? So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do another master class. If you guys didn't know, by the way, this October or something like that, this fall, we're going to do another one with um, new teachers and um, one returning teacher that is uh, going to be special guest sponsoring it. Um, and uh, some of you might know who that is that were in the class that saw my last secret lesson meeting uh, but trying to keep that 
on the wraps for now. Um, but yeah, so after that one in October, maybe we will think of a way to release all both of those uh, for sale or something. So I'll keep you guys posted. But if you missed it, I'm sorry for now. Uh, but hopefully you'll catch the one in October and eventually we'll get them available to you all. Um, so yeah. Anybody have anything they want to talk about? We got 19, 18 people in here. Hope you guys are doing good. Are you guys typing things and I'm not seeing it again? Is that what's going on? Or, or uh, last thing I see is Jason asking about the master class. Is that the last thing? Hello? you guys want to talk about? Or I'll, I'll talk about, the, the one last thing I wanted to talk about was, um, well, if you guys have bass notes, if any of you guys have bass notes, I like to kind of um, anchor my thumbs on the rim and then hit the bass note. You get a nice kind of uh, pivot mechanism and when you can, it lets you do easier rhythms like this. something I like to do for bottom notes, keep my thumb, helps, okay, placing the fist bump in different places in the beat, well this is actually something that I am only recently experimenting with fist bumps, um, but usually, right, you know, in these upper front quadrants here, around the uh, you know, five and seven o'clock. It matters your pan. Different pans have different spacing, right? Some pans have no spacing. Your note goes right up to the ding. If that's the case, you better not, you better not fist bump your pan. Um, and you know, because a motion like that eventually could, if you're hitting too close to the tone field, you uh, you could knock it out of tune. So it's something I don't do um, that often, but. Um, I have been experimenting with it some more, and it's not really that audible unless you're kind of like recording situation. If you're playing outside with a bunch of people, you know, you're probably not going to really hear that. It's more for yourself as like a feeling, you know, but let's see. used to it I'm like nervous I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the ding like that but I would I would do it if you're gonna experiment with it and at five o'clock and seven o'clock if you have the spacing or if you have spacing more spacing up just wherever you have the most interstitial space basically that's not a tone field but typically it's around this area but you don't want to hit on a tone field but um, yeah I don't really have too many grooves to even show you with that in it um, let's see different type of that more beefy bass kind of muted so it's nice to have as many different textures and sounds as you can and definitely that's that's one that's one of them you know to add would you um, would you recommend bass notes on a first order hand pan no 
I, w I would not, especially if you're not um, a percussionist or, you know, just just keep it simple at, at first. Um, I didn't have bass notes until my, I think my, um, maybe my third hand pan, I think. And that was um, this one, my Aura Maelstrom, which I still have. So this was my third one. Just, it just had three notes that are bass notes. I, and I like the bass notes more on the bottom than the high notes, I'm coming to realize, because it's just, um, it adds so much to a scale when you can put a, a low chord all of a sudden. you out of getting bass notes if that's what you want because they are awesome and you can always just ignore them until you're ready for them so you know it's up to you but um, you know yeah it's up to you it's 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 really uh, your your preference but I didn't I didn't have bottom notes into my third hand pan so it was good and actually you know I think it was good to not have a bunch of hand pans at once for the first couple of years you know just having one hand pan and then and then this Asachan Saladin was my second, and I combined those two, and that is how my one, well, my first album came about, Destiny. It's just two handpans, you know, 11, 11 songs with just two handpans, and I wrote all that different music between them. And they share a lot of the same notes, so it was, it was interesting. They're both D, <laughs> so that was interesting. I think the different note was I had a B flat, and that really uh, gave me some extra things, and I think I had an F and that gave me some different things too. So I had some chromatic possibilities. Um, but hey, if you want those bottom notes, I love them. All right. The hand pan is loud enough for acoustic gigs, like if I want to play with a guitar player and other percussionists. Um, it matters your, your hand pan. Some hand pans are softer and, you know, anytime I played hand pan out at a gig and wasn't mic'd, it was a disappointment for myself, you know, and uh, you probably hit the pan too hard, too. So if you're going to play out anywhere, I would mic yourself if you're playing with other people, for sure, because otherwise you're going to have to hit the pan so hard and probably knock it out of tune if you, if you don't know any better. Um, but, um, yeah, for an acoustic gig, I mean, it matters. You know, if it's a living room concert, maybe you won't need to mic it. If people are listening and quiet, maybe you won't need to, to mic it. But if it's, a, it's in, a, in a restaurant or a place where people are talking and not listening, you, you're gonna have to mic it if you're outside. Can you show a gain, a gain the right, can you show again the right hand move? I don't know what, what move you're talking about, Giovanna. Let me know. Char, is there a scale that you would recommend to get most versatility? Um, I'm not sure, you know? There's so many different scales. I don't even own a curd scale myself. This is close to a curd, but the B flat's on the bottom. It's really a, like an Amara. But then it goes even further. It has these other notes. But the B flat is what makes it the curd. So if I go. Then it's a curd. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'd say curd is definitely good. I know I'm going to be getting one soon for songwriting and, and lots of possibilities because you have seven, seven different notes, right? So you gotta think about it like that. Some scales are five different notes. And the scales of five different notes are like really fun. Like, I think this, a lot, a lot of halo scales only are like five different notes. I'm not sure if this is five or six different notes. But I know it's not seven. And so a lot of those scales with less notes are easier to just kind of free flow. I'm not sure 
this one might even have six different notes. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah. So I'm sorry. I can't really help you. It's kind of up to you, but... Um, and I'm not that familiar, you know, I'm a drummer, percussionist, so scales to me are still kind of foreign. I just kind of, what I like, how it sounds, and go after it, and do some scale research, and play with keyboard run scales, and figure out what I like. If you can only keep two of your pans, oh, that's a hard question, jeez. <laughs> um, I don't know. Definitely the new Yushima I got has the most notes. There's most possibilities probably with it and it's just a, a beautiful instrument um, I probably have to find one that works with that one really well and I keep that one so that I can jam with people and, and, and do some composition stuff so sorry I'm getting texts here all right Awesome. So I'll do uh, one more thing for today. And uh, this is kind of a, a flowing idea in six that you can apply to any pan and any scale. Okay? And it, it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm doing ding one, then I'm skip, skipping note two. If I'm doing ding two, then I'm skipping note one. Okay? I'm just going up the scale to four and then back down to the ding, and you create a six eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ding two, three, four, three, two. Ding two, three, four, three, two. Ding one, three, four, three. Cross six eight thing, and then you could kind of apply a snare, right? Instead of doing the ding the second time, do a, a slap on the side. So that would be your ding. So then after that, your right. Six eight flowing idea. So, um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? That's that's pretty much what I had in mind today. So, if there's anything else um, you guys want to talk about before we wrap it up here, oh. Hope you guys are having a good summer. It's summer now, right? Sure is. Um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, are well. You're welcome, Char. I wanted to do a live lesson once we got to a thousand people in here, so thanks for being here. And um, yeah, well, I guess that's it then. If nobody has anything else for today, thanks everybody. And um, you're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. If you guys want to study privately ever, I, uh, I do private lessons. Uh, PM me for more info. And can you give us the pattern in six? Yeah. I'll try a different pan now just to show you that you can do it on whatever pan you want.
skipping note one, and now we're skipping note two. We're just going up the scale, right? And down the scale. and then you can put that slap there. And it should kind of work nicely on whatever scale you have. Um, nice little flowing 6-8 kind of going between note 1 and note 2, right? Awesome, Jolanda, awesome. All right, so does anybody has any other questions? Um, I guess there is one more thing I wanted to talk about, um, which was kind of just doing a, a bass line, right? That's why bottom notes can be really helpful. Um, you can get a nice bass line going and then get kind of a melody. Even on this pan, like, I, I have something where it's just kind of random. Love the 6-8 idea, awesome. So I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate this bass line with a, a random melody. And then sometimes you can make it a repetitive motif over the bass line, but right the same motif. Here comes the melody. Ah, forgot to switch to the, the other bass note. So you kind of have to have things going on auto, auto, autopilot. You saw what happened there when I... What is the scale, you, scale you're using? Uh, this is a F Pygmy 19. idea when you just keep doing the same thing see before I was kind of doing random but then you can kind of just keep it uh, more specific too I kind of like to do that towards the end of a, cli a climax of something cool this is a new uh, this is a Yishima pan tan this is one of my newer pans I'm currently working on that song that I was just showing you um, but yeah, it's Yishima, top quality, definitely worth worth every penny, really top of the top of the crowd. So, thanks. If, if you guys have any, uh, if you don't have any other questions, I'm still here if you have any questions, but otherwise, uh, it's getting hot up in this attic. F pig B19, yeah. Yishima F pig B19. Um, yeah, so. I hope you guys are good. And, um, I guess that's it then. Alright, well. Until next time. Thanks for being here, guys. Bye bye.